Hi, I'm Mark Bradford, and I'm in Fort Worth at the Fort Worth Modern to introduce my show, which is Mark Bradford in Papers. It's interesting because uh, it, the grid did save my life. When I, when I was in art school, you would always hear the critique of the grid, and people wanted to break out of the grid, and how the grid was getting in the way of painting. And I actually, when I first started, I was thinking the same thing until actually I started to apply the grids to under my work, and I had this really emotional reaction to it. I felt mm, safe. But I realized that my, in my personal life growing up, everything was always in flux, constantly in flux, constantly in flux. And there was an unstableness that I kind of felt on a personal and emotional level. But the grid, in a way, when I say saved my life, it gave me um, a foundation to start making work from. And so I never fought it. I, I, I kind of was always comfortable working with it. I was comfortable navigating it and moving it and pushing it forward, but it never was something that I wish wasn't there. Because if, you, if it wasn't there, then I, I would go back to this kind of un, instability, things that I couldn't control, things that were kind of put on me. I still look around and like the grid and form, yeah. And it had a, it had a relationship to architecture, I think, which I, again, structures and form and foundations. Well, a wise woman told me that you don't make work autobiographically, but you make it with your life. And I thought that that was brilliant, actually. Uh, a brilliant, brilliant, but the way she just put that in, it's brilliant. And I actually believe that 100%. You always have to have a roommate. It's like a roommate. Um, it really comes down to, I guess, intention. It's sort of intention and how much you're willing to reveal and how much you don't want to reveal. And it's like a, it's, it's, it's like a delicate walk between the two. I, I, Oftentimes I rely on the, the material and the memory of the material to do a little bit of the work for me. I also rely a little bit on the subject matter to do a little bit of the political work for me. And then I also give myself the freedom of abstraction to go wherever I need to go so that I'm not a spokesman for something. I always like language. Well, language is different than text. Um, I like language because I like how we use it and misuse it and remaster it. I love, I love language. I love the oral um, ways in which it transfers, the way stories transfer from person to person to Instagram, back to TikTok, back to, uh, you know, at, at having a conversation at Starbucks about Mark Bradford's in paper show. Like, these, these connections and, and interruptions, I, abs I, I really, really like that. Um, maybe I started loving the use of language when I grew up in the hair salon, and I'd have all these adventures all in the world. I would travel so much, and I'd come back to the hair salon. I really wanted to share them. So you really, by sharing the story, you don't sit down and say, well, on you know, March 16th, I went to the Louvre, and what I saw at the Louvre, that's how much that's boring. Tell it again. And actually, what I realized is they're like, "Come on, take us, on, take us on a voyage." And then you start again and say, "Oh, girl, I went to this nightclub the night before. Had too much to drink. Met this. Oh, okay, here we go. 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 Bring, bring. Here, here we go. Bring people in. Language can bring people in. We can, um, with tone and and the, the the way in which we say what we're saying. You 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 can play with temperature and language and." It, the way you enunciate certain things and pull back from certain things. It's, it, I love all of that. That, for me, is the, it's a delicate dance of language. And it's a delicate dance because if you don't do it right, it can fall into misinterpretation. And so I, 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 I really love that. I, I, sometimes I notice I'm not a, I, I can't, I don't text very well because I can't get the way I talk to make the text, I don't, and I can't text fast enough. And, I'm, and, and texting, I'm always fascinated by text messages because oftentimes I'll receive a text message from someone and I wouldn't think that that text message would belong to that person. 
it's maybe super, super youthful, or they use a lot of emojis, and I wouldn't think that person would use emojis. Oh, wow, they use, just interesting. Just the way we use language has always fascinated me. When it comes to the paintings, sometimes I'd pull from language, sometimes I'd pull from a little conversation, sometimes I'd pull from what I'm reading. Early on, they were, it really was pulling from music. I moved away from music to just slang sometimes. It just depends. It has no direct, right? I just, and oftentimes when I use language in my work, I tend to um, repeat the same phrase over. It's like an exclamation, like daddy, 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 or DNA testing. It's because there's um, an urgency, so I'll, I'll just repeat the same thing, or a, a slogan, James Brown is dead. Um, and those just, just jump out at me. I've always worked with things that have a use, things that have a utility, things that belong to the world. Even if I use paint, it's, I usually probably still won't go to the art store to buy the paint. I'll still go to Home, Home Depot. I, I guess I just like use value, things that have use value. But at the same time, I like to kind of wrestle with changing that use to something else. I may drag, I may go to Home Depot, I may go to the streets to get paper down, I may get a merchant poster, but when I drag it into the studio and kind of close the door, it's not quote unquote the modernism, modernism's idea of the hermetically sealed studio where nothing gets in. No, I bring a lot in, but then I close the door and I try to, I try to inscribe it with another language that's more personal, which maybe has to do with where I'm trying to make the material go. And that's sometimes a little bit of, you know, a little bit of a struggle. It wants to go one place and I want to go another place. And so we kind of do the tug of war a little bit. Um, I think that the, the, the work of art always has to win. The work of art, not the site where the material comes from. They're very different. And, um, so it's just really a back and forth until the work of art stands in front of me. But I think that the struggle back and forth, that's where the hope comes from. I necessarily don't, everything that I bring, some of the work is politically loaded, some of the sites are politically loaded, um, but when I bring it into the studio and I kind of wrestle with it, there is a kind of rough beauty that starts to emerge or something more than the site that it came from. I'm sure that I'm working that out for my, myself. I'm sure that as a six-year-old being, you know, beat up and not having much value, I'm sure that that determination to keep moving on, that determination to still have value, to be somewhere, that is the same thing. That kind of uh, tenacity. Uh, and, and so I think it's the same thing in the studio. No matter where the work comes from, I always wrestle it to whatever I need for it, it to, to be. And the, and the artwork has to always win. Oh, you know, that is interesting. What is the biggest surprise when I looked at this exhibition? How, how thoughtful but yet tentative, tentative I was. I mean, I could really see me, you know, trying to figure it out before your eyes. I mean, really, I was, re oof, like, I just took this material and just started to figure, trying to figure out my own relationship to it and my career and art history and where I came from and what that meant and power and anger and what I wanted to show. and what, I just could see it trying to be worked out on the surfaces. And, and also, <clears throat> I didn't know how perfect the Dancing in the Streets video for the show is without the sound. Oh, I was just, I, I, would, I never would have thought that. Um, what I can really see is I'm, I'm like the tortoise. People think I'm the hare, but I'm actually not the tortoise. I think if you just laid out every painting that I ever made, you would just see me kind of 
The next one I made a little bit of a breakthrough and a little bit of a breakthrough and a little bit of a breakthrough. I peel back the onion very, very well, I peel back the onion very, very slow. Everybody does, please. You think you're gonna go on Instagram and tell everybody who you are and then you're sitting in front of them. Tell me, every, you, that's not how humans work. We're guarded. And then we peel it back very slow when we feel safe. So when I look at this, I see me just, you know, peeling it back, just a couple of onion skins back, just a little bit. That did surprise me. And how, um, how present I feel when I look at the work. I remember every single one of these relationships. I remember the ones that were, the painting in back of you, I can remember working on it and I can remember the material. And I can remember I used a different silver paper. And I remember at three o'clock in the morning, I jumped out of bed. I was living in the studio, so jumping out of bed was in the studio. And I went around the corner to look at it. And I thought that I had ruined it. And actually, it turns out that I didn't. I'm always, whenever I finish a painting for the day, when I go home, I'm actually convinced that it's not a good painting. I'm not opposite. I think it's bad. When I come in the morning, I go, oh, it's not as bad as I thought. Or I go, oh, yeah, it is bad. Um, so I can remember, I can remember every single trial and tribulation that I went through in every single one of these relationships. I call them relationships, because that's all they are. Every single one of the work, if your work is honest, it's a relationship, and you go from flirting at the bar, eye contact, all the way to divorce court, you never want to see each other again, goodbye. That's what an honest relationship is. You go through everything. And so I, some good, some you thought were gonna be easy, and a little more difficult. Some you thought were difficult, were gonna be easy. But I can remember every single, so for me, it's almost like a reunion of relationships. Like, like 14 people you've had a relationship with in one room. I'm like, oh Lord, that's a lot of people. But most of them were good, most of them were okay.